tremble in fear, feculent flesh creatures. This is Internet Personality Evangelist, and I've got a review copy of Three Zero's MDLX Megatron, provided by Three Zero from their MDLX line, this time representing Megatron, through the aesthetic lens of Three Zero art director Kelvin Sow. This is the first Decepticon in the line, so not only does he need to deliver a strong debut for the villainous vision of MDLX, he also needs to look like he can beef with fists with Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. This is the segment I always title in my scripts as Paint and Sculpt, so I'll just state the obvious. MDLX Megatron is covered in silver paint that punches a tyrannical fist straight through the light spectrum before sinking a welcome quartet of knuckles into your rods and cones. I'm calling your eyeballs masochists. It's cool. It's 2023. Anyway, it goes without saying that the paintwork here is pretty dang stellar as I've come to expect from a 3-0 piece. I dropped an opening gush on the silver, but those spots of red are explosive bursts of contrast as well, with some silver weathering on the corners that admittedly made me at times think I chipped the paint, but I, I looked at it real close and I, I don't think I did. I think that's intentional. As for the sculpt and design, it's the continuing tale of Kelvin Sow's take on the Transformers, complete with some internal metal component chunkery. I dig it. If you're into this, I think you will too. And I don't think it'll really move the needle for those who aren't MDLX aesthetic enjoyers. Perhaps the nature of a Megatron gels this together more for you than an Optimus or a Bumblebee. It's purely subjective, so I give you this objective. Leave your take in the comments section. It's engagement! Active. Megatron includes three pairs of swappable hands, and of course, the openers are classic fists of tyranny, iron and clenched, and absolutely shakable at the sky while cursing one's meddling foes. The swap is a simple ball popper, which can lead to the second pair of hands. POSED HANDS! They're open with a touch of flair, excellent for clutching the idea of the world in one's own dictatorly palm. The final pair of hands are asymmetrical, a left open hand and a right pointing hand. Megatron doesn't really come with obvious things to hold, though perhaps bonus pieces may show up as future pack-in parts, but there's always time for pointing. There's always a place for pointing. Technically, Megatron's cannons are also accessories because they're removable and rebuildable. The fusion cannon and back cannon can combine to add a penetrating elongated barrel, or you can switch the fat tip out entirely to use the back cannon as a thin tip for a more visceral and P-38-ish silhouette. This stuff is neat if a little superfluous without any supporting fiction to flesh out why Megatron would be swapping these bits around. I think one more option part would have made this feel more like a full-on play function rather than a bit of geometric happenstance, like some kind of grenade launcher part, or like, I don't know, open up his, his shin and, and there's a laser sight piece inside he can stick on. Aside from how that would probably mess with the articulation. Oh hey, it's the articulation segment! There's a ball socket joint at the top of Megatron's neck and at the bottom of Megatron's neck that lets him have all kinds of range, all kinds of funny abilities to do things with, with gripping his head and moving it around. He can get a real, real ovular kind of aura, aura kind of motion going on in here. And then in the mid torso, there is also a ball socket connection. So you can tilt left and right, you can tilt forwards and backwards, revealing some detail here, revealing some spine over here. And the ball sockets continue in the shoulders because there is a, a double ball barbell connection in the shoulder so that you can reposition the axis of the shoulder uh, up and down or a little bit forwards and backwards, more so up and down. Uh, it's very tight, but you can kind of see that it's like down here. It's up there. And then uh, if you try to swing forwards, there's a dedicated and sculpted reveal of detail uh, to swing the entire joint structure forward. And then here you can maybe see the double ball barbell system there, readjusting the main axis up and down in the cup. Obviously this means you can swing the arm forwards and backwards, it's kind of the boring part. And then if I move this shoulder piece outwards, you can also see a dedicated outward hinge. And that in tandem with all of the other stuff means you have a colossal amount of shoulder range uh, to work with. And uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, there's also a bicep swivel, how cute. There's a double jointed elbow, how cute. The wrist ball sockets have a fair amount of range so that they can not only twist but waggle a bit 
in multiple axes. And almost as a small mercy, at the waist itself, there is just a cut swivel. A simple cut swivel. So the ball socket uh, math uh, does not have to accommodate a ball here and here. And I, I actually kind of find that a little bit relaxing, especially because there is a, a ball socketed skirt on uh, on either side of the front, a ball socketed skirt on either side of the back, or the side, either side of the side, and a ball socketed skirt on either side of the back. And they're all tiny ball sockets. They feel a little scary, but I can confirm so far, every accident I've had results in them popping out and not snapping off at the stem. I think that's some very finely tuned tolerances. However, still be careful, especially because you can easily bump them if you don't pre-spread them when you're messing with the double barbell ball socket connection between the hip and the groin. This means that you can not only kind of do the fig arts thing of repositioning the hip joint itself to be a bit lower, uh, this goes in every axis. You can go forwards, you can go backwards. I did them in reverse. Forwards, backwards. It's an entire ball socket range connecting the hip ball to the crotch. And then this thing itself can also swing outwards and forwards once you've positioned its main axis. There's a cute little thigh swivel. There is a knee that double joints thusly. And then there's a little bit of a wiggly thing here, which is not really linkage articulation. It mostly means that you can uh, have it hug against the kneecap when you bend the knee just a little bit, and then it will kind of push itself back out when you straighten it. But uh, it's not a linkage system as far as I can tell. There's also a wiggly bit here. This is like one wiggly structure to allow for some ankle movement. The ankle is on a very long stemmed double ball barbell ball joint, which means that you can uh, reposition the ball socket up in here somewhere and down here at the ankle to change not only the, the tiltage of the foot, but it's very axis and position side to side, forwards and backwards, and a little bit in between uh, itself. So this is, a little bit much as far as posing math for, for some posing brains, but if you're the type who likes to engage with this sort of level of granularity, then there you go. Uh, there is also a toe joint. Hooray! Most importantly, all this articulation feels really good. The double ball barbell joints use metal in the stem and balls, which means that the heaviest load is carried by the densest material and they are cupped by something grippy enough to make it feel just tight and meaty, not like something where there's a brittle end that could crack at some point. Like, I guess we'll see years from now, but first impressions are this is very gristled and steak-like in its hand feel. MDLX Megatron is absolutely up to MDLX par, with my main qualm being that I'd love to have seen just one more accessory part. A mace or a sword, possibly further integrating into the somewhat skeletal cannon swap gimmick. Forget all that laser sight grenade launcher stuff I said, what if you could just stick a sword into his gun, wouldn't that be neat and metal? Hopefully something like that can get added to another Decepticon's shipping tray down the road. Otherwise, this guy stands powerfully against his heroic MDLX counterparts, and I'm looking forward to seeing some henchmen join him sooner than later, possibly Oh, just 6 to 12 to 18 that all are jets. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and my peaceful tyranny wouldn't be possible without the powerful patrons and maniacal members who boost the potential of my Energon Reserves to a bursting and destructive climax! <laughs>